Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be doing my first part of my Q&A video. So what I decided to do about a week ago was put a call out for some questions to see if you guys had any for me. I think the last Q&A I did was probably, it was quite a few months ago. If I can find that video, I will be sure to link it up above or in the description box down below. But you guys were really sweet and you took the time to ask me some questions and I got quite a few. So I thought the best way to do this would probably be to divide it into a two part video. I'm going to start off with responding to the majority of questions I got asked on Instagram. Instagram, whether they were underneath the picture I posted or if they were sent to me privately and then in the second part of the video I will answer the questions that were sent to me via YouTube or Facebook if you guys don't know any of those links I will have them listed down below all my social feeds are listed down below so do feel free to check those out if you'd like so I'm going to jump right into it because you guys know how much I love to chat and I don't want to go on and on and on rambling because I know these videos can get quite rambling. So I'm going to grab my phone. Um, if you see me glancing down, it's only just because um, I don't know the questions offhand and I'm actually just looking at quite a few of them right away. So I'm just going to kind of go through them. If your question doesn't get answered, it's mainly just because it was very similar to somebody else's and I don't want to kind of go back and um, answering the same thing. I got quite a lot of questions about driving, being gluten free and being Canadian in the UK. So they all kind of come together and um, I hope you guys understand. So I'm going to go with question number one and that is from Lizzie Karras. Hi Lizzie. Lizzie's been a long time viewer so thank you so much. Lizzie has two questions and the first question is do you have celiacs? So the answer to that is no, I do not have celiac disease. I have been tested for celiac disease um, and I probably will need to get tested for it like, well, whenever, whenever my nutritionist kind of thinks so. So probably like in maybe in another year or so. I do not have celiac disease though. I have a very high intolerance which sort of borders having an allergy to gluten and wheat. Um, the difference between that is that if you have an allergy or if you have something like celiac disease, if I were to have wheat, so say I just ate a bagel right now and I were to have wheat, it would show up immediately, the side effects. Um, they take a long time, or sorry, they take a very short amount of time to show up and whether it's um, a rash, vomiting, anything like that, your body just responds to it um, right away. When you have an intolerance to something, which is what I have, it's almost like having food poisoning. It takes like for me, for example, if I were to have wheat by accident at dinner time, it would probably be around midnight where I would start to get the feelings. And what happens to me if I have wheat is that I, it's basically like I go down under for 48 hours. Um, I get really sick. I can't eat anything for a couple days. And I get very down, I get very depressed, and I also, as of lately, have started getting some rashes. So I'll get rashes around my mouth as well as on my wrists, so very sort of sensitive areas. But it's almost like a build-up to if you get food poisoning, so I know it's coming, I know um, kind of what to expect. Whereas if you have something like an allergy or celiacs, it happens just like that. So to answer your question, Lizzie, no, I only have intolerances. Um, the second part of your question is, how are your driving lessons going? So if you guys didn't catch last week's vlog, I will try and remember to link that as well. I kind of went into detail about what was going on with me and driving. I'm loving my driving lessons at the moment. I will be honest, the past two to three weeks, I've struggled with loving it, <laughs> mainly because my lessons have started to get a lot harder. Um, this is because I'm, I think I'm nearing the end, I'm approaching my test, so they're getting a lot more technical, and it's kind of like the fun part is gone, if that makes sense. So with that has come a lot of anxiety. Um, I last week wrote my theory test and I didn't pass, which had me in a kind of a low spot for a little while, but I got out of it, picked myself out. I'm quite good at picking myself up. Um, and kind of moving on from things. Um, but I have gotten back into loving the lessons again now because first of all, I have an amazing instructor and I am so blessed to have her. But second of all, I've relaxed a lot more, um, mainly because I've seen the outcome of what happens when I get so uptight and anxious. I just don't do well. And I'm sure that would be the same case with anyone. 
but I'm feeling like they're going well at the moment. Um, my driving instructor is actually away for a couple weeks because she's going to go on holiday. So I really need to practice in the time being. The reason why, and you guys have probably wondered this, um, why I don't practice a lot of the time, like in between lessons, a lot of people will go out in their car is because I can't stand our car. <laughs> we have um, a very new car and it's diesel where as I don't drive that kind of car when I go on my lessons and it's just, it scares me, you guys. It's big and it scares me. And in the future, when I do get my own car, it is not the kind of car I'm going to get. So the lessons are going well. I'm slowly plugging along, but I'm getting there and I'm really hoping to be able to, well, in the next few weeks, rewrite my theory test and ace that one and then go through my actual driving test. Because let me tell you guys, I am ready to get back on the road and just get just drive myself so Lizzie those are your questions I hope that answered them um so Amy from Amy Bean mom asked me is there anything you prefer about where you grew up to where the boys are growing up okay so for those of you who are new to my channel I grew up in Toronto in Canada and um, Toronto is a city and I grew up in a lovely area. It was really nice. Um, I had a good group of friends who went to a great school. I would have to say, um, do I prefer anything? And I love the close-knit feel of the town that we are raising our boys in. It's a small town. Um, it's not too small, but it's small. I mean, you're guaranteed to probably see somebody you know every day. Um, there are only three schools in our town. So Toronto, gosh, I don't even know the population of Toronto now, but there was hundreds of schools in Toronto. So although I kind of felt like I lived in a close community where I grew up, it was a city and a massive city at that. It was extremely multicultural. There was tons of things to do. Where I live, it's a little bit limited, but I'll be honest with you guys, I like that. I like the minimalistic sort of feel. And that is probably because I'm sort of going on this whole minimalistic journey at the moment. So I kind of like that the boys have a bit of choice, but not too much choice. I think they'll stay out of trouble that way. So I have to say, I much prefer sort of raising them in the whole small town kind of feel of things. They also live 20 minutes from their grandparents. Um, when I grew up in Toronto, my parents are actually English, just to confuse everybody. So we were very far away from England um, or anywhere else where our relatives were living. So and my parents worked quite a bit. So um, we didn't sort of have that extended family kind of feel, if you will. And um, I think the boys are living in a lovely small town with lots of family close by and we're very fortunate. So I would have to say I prefer them growing up here, um, just in general, the whole small town kind of feel. Okay, so Carrie Hogg asks, how do you come up with the different lunches that you do on your preschool pack lunch videos? I love your creativity. Thank you very much, Carrie. I don't know if my kids would agree on the creativity, but, um, well, first of all, I, I only really packed lunches for Jack throughout the school year because Harry does get hot school lunches and come this September, they will both be getting hot school lunches. So, um, with Jack, I did a lot of variety because I realized on the three days that he was at nursery for, he just needed that kind of fun when it came to lunch. Um, he didn't, he didn't get really interesting snacks at his nursery. So he just, uh, he needed like a fun lunch, if you will. Jack is not a sandwich person. So that took a lot of creative thinking. Um, the majority of time I did pack things like sausage rolls, um, like pre-cooked chicken nuggets, things like that. He liked really sort of snacky kind of things. Whereas Harry this summer has been going to day camp a bit, so I've had a chance to pack lunches for him. Um, Harry would quite happily eat a plain ham sandwich every single day for the rest of his life, I think. So really how I came up with the ideas was just really focusing on each child because although the boys can be very similar, both be very athletic and boisterous and, you know, they do generally like eating the same foods, I really tailored their lunch to kind of make it a little bit more personal for the two of them. I wanted them to get excited when they opened up their lunch. And, you know, they can both be so busy in the mornings and busy in the afternoons that having something nice that they can see mummy has made. And that's what I wanted, especially if I wasn't going to be there with them if they were at day camp or at preschool. 
So yeah, I guess just a little bit of time and thought and also watching other YouTube mummies gave me a lot of inspiration. Um, so yeah, that's how I kind of came up with them. Okay, last question. Carol Hanning asked, what is your family food budget and do you go grocery shopping every single week? Right, um, it's funny because if you look back in some of my grocery hauls, I tend to always say this food should last us for 10 days. Um, but yes, I pretty much go grocery shopping every single week, at least to top things up as well. Um, so Carol, our food budget, I would like to say, it did start off, I'll be honest, at 100 pounds a week, but that was also to include any home goods as well because I tend to buy them at the similar stores. So I basically allocated 400 pounds a month, so 100 pounds each week for food as well as um, home goods stuff. I've been able since then to kind of come down, and I've really been trying to come down to 75 pounds because I find that if I take the time, it does take, it can take like a full morning or more to go to Little, which is like Aldi if you're in the States. Um, if I go to Little for like all my sort of necessities, my pantry and all that kind of stuff, as well as my home good stuff. And then if I go to our local grocers and I go to our local butchers, I can definitely get all local produce, local meat, local fish, as well as um, all my pantry stuff from Little, and I can definitely get well under 75 pounds for the week. And it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes I'm really tempted just to go to Tesco and get a whole shop done. Sometimes I'm really tempted, as you guys know, to do an online Asda delivery, which I tend to do, especially during the summer holidays, because I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna take both my kids to the grocery store, it's too hard. So I think with a little bit of time, an effort I can get my budget to be at 75 pounds this is one of my goals for the new school year is to reduce it down to that um and yeah just meal planning that's how I really work as well is definitely definitely meal planning and I'm one of those people that enjoys meal planning um I like going on Pinterest I like going on Facebook and seeing all the different kind of groups I do have a video on how to meal plan effectively I will try and link up above um and yeah, that's, I tried to stick to that budget of 75 pounds and everybody's happy. <laughs> I hope that answered your question and thank you so much for commenting. So you guys, thank you so much for watching part one of the Q&A. I really enjoy doing these videos. You guys know I love to chat, so it just gives me an excuse to sit down to have a cup of coffee and chat with you guys. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to message me. All my socials will be linked down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and please do stay tuned in the next week or so, and I will be posting part two of my Q&A this summer. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye now.